Hi, welcome back to Wave Revision. Um, this is number three. Today we're going to talk about interference. There are three types of interference questions I can ask you. One is double slit, one is with single slit, and uh, the third one is direction graded. If you want to know how interference happen, you um, and you have no idea how it happened yet. It happened because of half and face differences, and uh, obviously superposition. Um, really, really quickly, path difference. Um, that are two sources. Okay, so one wave superimposed with another wave, and the amplitude and the displacement add together. And sometimes they cancel, sometimes they don't. When they cancel, it's disruptive interference. When they add up, it's constructive interference. Um, uh, but that is determined by the path differences. If the path difference is the whole number of lambda, you get constructive. If um, path difference is um, multiples of half lambda, you get disruptive interferences. But this is something we dive, we dove into in um, the um, a path phase difference and interference video. So if, if you still don't understand this, go back to that video and have a look. Um, today, what we're gonna look at specifically is uh, the nuances of um, these three slits. Number one, I want to remind you that there are three slits, three types of slits, which many students will not understand why we have different equations for different slits and for some of you hopefully that's not happening but for some of you has never heard of single slits before some of my year 13 that they done their mock exams and they they swear they haven't been taught that in year 12 as well so that is something that we we're going to look at as well but all right, all right. Um, how this, is this video going to work? We're going to talk a double slit first and then some questions, um, single slits and then some questions and then um, diffraction gratings and, and then some questions. You're going to uh, write down notes on how they work and then I'm going to go through like easy questions, mainly multiple choice questions and then you're, you're going to try the next few questions. At the end of this, we are going to do a test, um, but more details to come. All right, so um, double slits. What are double slits? Double slits, um, obviously, there are two slits, and when they, when wave dive, uh, go through those slits, it's a barrier, so they diffract. When a diffraction is um, bending of waves because the gap is so small that parallel waves become circular. Um, when they diffract, they interfere with one another and super, superpose and interfere with one another because they touch one another, they stop the waves. But um, this is what we, well, you know already, this is the easy part of interference. But the diff more difficult part of interference is actually understanding what the three equations are, what the two equations are. So for double slits, the equation is W equals lambda D over S. When you put a screen in here for a double slits, what would you get is things like this. It's like, ah, if I put a screen in here, you'll get lines like this. These are called maximums. Why? Because if, if you put a screen in here, the crest of, a, a, the crest of these two waves will meet and get constructive interference. So you will get something called fringes. The fringes are maximums. Um, but because double slits are usually shaped differently to, to diffusion gratings, what the um, 
the maximum you will get is smaller together. So what you'll get is slit, uh, um, light like, like this instead of dots. You will still get dots, but like when they're so close together, we call them fringes. And um, when you have maximus very, very close together, we call this fringe spacing. Fringe spacing are distances between the center of the maximus. So therefore maxima here, there's a maxima here, and the distance between are called fringe spacing. All right, so let's look at this equation first and look at what these three things is. This is this one, W, is fringe spacing. And this thing is going to determine the pattern. So when they say that, oh, uh, I'm going to change one thing and what will it look like in the, on the screen, we are talking about this, um, how does these few things are found that, okay? Right, so um, a few things. D, I'll talk about D later. S is distance between the uh, slits. So, if you've got two sources, um, this will be S. This will be S. It's the distance between the two sources. Or the fringes. Okay? Alright. The next one in here, this is self-explanatory. This is obviously wavelength. In meters. This is in meters as well. And this is in meters as well. Um, okay, the last one obviously in here is the distance between the slit and the screen. On here, it's, this will be this distance. Okay, so um, I know that those those letters, but um, please, 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 please don't get that mix up. This is basic, basic one on one um, interference. For, let's recap one more time. Fringe spacing is W. It determines the pattern. When they ask you about how does the pattern look like, we are talking about W in here. And as is this distance between the states, sometimes they will give it in millimeters. Do not fall into that trap, turn into meters. Wavelength is lambda, self explanatory, and D is distance between the slit and the screen. Okay, so let's do our first question together. All right, first question it is slide number two. Wavelength is 600 nanometers and the slit separation is 0.5 mm apart. Fringe distances are observed at distance 1.5 meters from the slits. Obviously very, very easy. This is a very, very straight substitution question. The only thing that are uh, trying to test you is to, to know whether uh, what, what are these symbols. So W in here will be um, what we are trying to look for because they are talking about the separation of fringes which is the maximum. So W is here, lambda is 600 nanometers, nanometers is 10 to 9. Distance between the slits is 1.5 meters and S is separate separation between the slits which is 0 0.5 mm, so 10 to minus 3 instead. So get the calculation on, put, put it in the calculator, it will get 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So the answer is B in this situation. Okay, try it yourself. If you try, uh, try it and quite confident with it, please try question uh, slide two and 
have a look at slide two and I'll come back and uh, talk about it, okay? Okay, so question two. On a parallel beam of monochromatic, monochromatic, what does that mean? Mm. Um, monochromatic is just one color. That means that the wavelength of light will be just one of them. If the light is not monochromatic, why is it bad? Uh, in interference, it's not bad, but you can't see the maximus normally. Why? Because if this changes, if it's a spread, then the maximus or the fringes will be in different places. There's one question in, um, in the next video slide that's talking about it. Think about, mm, so if it's, think about it, if it's purple light, what will happen? There's a red wavelength and blue wavelength, that means the maximus will be at two points. So purple light will actually separate into one blue maxima and one red maxima. How about white light? What will happen? Think about it. All right, anyway, um, it says that uh, they are changing. Why are they changing? So they are changing. Um, what will which line of tape will increase the spacing of fringes? Hmm. Again, let's look at which of these are they talking about. They're obviously talking about this. They're always talking about this. They talk about how the pattern will change. Um, so, uh, for this to increase, this has to increase, this has to increase, and obviously this has to decrease. So, um, Let's look at the four options, which one is which. Let's look at A first, slit spacing, increase, uh, slit spacing, increase, which is this, times now half. If this divide uh, lower to, this would be increase to. Distance from this half, that will in, uh, decrease half as well, so that there will be no change. So A is incorrect. How about B? B in here, slit spacing. Slit spacing is here. This is halved. That will increase by two. And uh, this is some slit doubled. That will increase by two. So the answer will be B, because W will be increased four folds. Okay, this is how you deal with um, changing questions. These are uh, um, racial questions, as I say, say. So if you can't do this by yourself, just copy what I'm doing and uh, try it yourself later. Question three. Uh, question three is one of those multiple choice questions that actually really, really, really look at whether you actually understand the concept or not. Um, Question three is also one of the questions that is asking what what will increase fringe spacing. You see that's a that's a pattern in here. That's a type of question that always asks you what will uh, how will W change if other things are changing. Okay, that's very 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 commonly asked. All right, um, as you know, let's preempt this question first to increase this. These two has to increase and this has to decrease. Right, why? Because this is in the numerator and this is a denominator, okay? Right, question three. Um, a, increasing separation of the single slit and the double slit. So between the single slit and the double slit. So this is the light source, why do we need a single slit in here. Single slit in here is make sure it is coherent. Because when you have a light source in here, sometimes it is incoherent. Coherent means that it's got the same frequency and phase difference. Um, when it starts from here, if the phase differences in here are different, um, then you can't, you can't predict where the maximums are 
and um, if they are they are not coherent, they can't in what well, they they can still interfere, but they can't give you a certain maximum of just con where where the constructive and destructive interference places are. But if they ask you why do they you need a single slit is for single slit in um the soft practical for a double slit interference question is because it's coherent. But increase the separation between the single slit and the double slit in here is not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything to uh, because it's not changing any single thing from here. This is not D. D is this distance from here to the screen. The slits in here are, are S in here is this distance. So that's not changing that. And lambda is obviously the wavelength of the wave. That's not changing that. So that's not going to happen. B. Increasing the width of the single slit. Again, the single slit in this situation is making sure the light source is coherent. So the width of the single slit is not changing any of these, so it is not going to make a difference to the pattern. Um, let's look at um, C. Decreasing the distance between the double slit and the screen. Oh, finally, it's something that is in the equation. So, uh, decreasing this, decreasing uh, the distance between double slit and screen is going to lead to a decrease in the footprint spacing. So C is incorrect as well. D, it says that decreasing the separation of the double slit, decreasing the separation of the double slit is S, is going to lead an increase of W. So that's why the answer is D. Okay, that one says D for question three. All right, so using these ideas, um, there are three questions that I want you to try. Uh, question four, question five, and question six. Um, I'm gonna give you some hints now um, for you to be able to uh, try these questions. But if you prefer not to listen to me or have a go first and come back when you're stuck, you can pause this video and come back a little bit later as well. But right now, um, I will talk about question four. Um, what I want you to do in this section is that I want you to write separate notes if you don't get any one of these questions and come back and make sure you memorize any of these because um, it's very, very worthy. It's nothing to do with like whether you can calculate something or not. Well, some, some of that, but wave this section. You need to, to know how to um, use a certain phrase, um, certain, certain scientific keywords in order for, for you to understand, like actually get the marks. Anyway, um, question four, uh, for A, Sketch a graph to show how the intensity varies with the precision of the monochromatic light source. Um, you will need to know where um, the, the, the center will be the highest intensity and then it will decrease exponentially uh, to the side as well. Okay? Um, okay, B1. So make sure you copy the diagram in, in your book. B1. What is meant by coherent sources? We'll just talk about that. Um, ah, for, for B2, the single slit in the uh, arrangement. This is asking you why do you need single slit? We'll just talk about that. For B3, in this experiment, light be behaves as a wave. Explain how the bright fringes are formed. If you do not understand this question, this uh, three mark questions, please write it in your notes and memorize it. Because these, this is um, the question they ask you over and over and over again. Question for C. Um, calculate the distance between the double slits and the screen using this equation. Obviously, that's easy. Um, C2. 
how the change is uh, when the violet laser is replaced by the green laser. Hmm. What are you changing if you're talking about the violet laser? You talk, talk about the change in wavelength. Is it going higher or lower? All right, number five. Um, measure, describe how he should change the way the apparatus is changed in order to obtain an accurate value of the wavelength. So in this situation, uh, you are talking about um, uh, percentage error and percentage uncertainty. Remember, when your um, measurements are bigger, the, um, the percentage uncertainty is much, much lower. So for example, use this as big as possible. And use this as big as possible. Okay? All right. So. Hi. Right. Question five. I'm not going to give you a lot of hit and help. I will just talk about one or two things. 5A. Um, describe the interference pattern that's seen on a white screen. Remember, in this question, the source is white light. What will happen if, with white light? A white, uh, another hint is white light is a mixture of all the lights. So where are the maximums going to be? Why are they doing that? Question B, um, um, interference question. The filters transmit only green light and wavelength of red light is placed between the white light and, and the screen. Describe the pattern now seen on the white screen. So do a calculation of W with lambda and do a calculation of uh, red light of 1.2 lambda and uh, explain this in terms of W. Okay? So if one of them is lambda, all of these are the same, one of them is 1.2 lambda, how would W change? All right, C is also that um, changing these three things, how would that change in here? And whether, uh, I want you to po uh, point out this to you, whether this change is likely to reduce uncertainty, okay? So you can only reduce uncertainty if um, the measurements are getting bigger or it is more accurate. Think about these two in this idea, this determination, and um, have a look at the marking scheme if you think that um, you are wrong and make notes on that as well. Number six, I'm not gonna give you any hints. You're gonna just do it yourself. Hi, oh, welcome back. So, we have just done double slits. Now we're going to talk about single slits, okay? For single slits, some people will say, oh my goodness, how can you pass something through a single slit and still interfere? That is a really, really good question and this is actually not part of the syllabus. You just need to know that in fact. But um, for the uh, inquisitors in you, there's a purple laser. When a purple laser comes into a single slit, it actually turns into circular waves. But it turns into circular waves in different areas. So for example, if this is the slit, this is the distance between the slits, this will want to go in the left hand side, this will want to turn in turn in circular in the left hand side of the slit, and this is going to want to turn in circular in the right hand side of the slit. And it happens in different areas of the gaps as well. So these two things, even though there's only one gap, the photon or the, or, or the waves of the purple laser actually turn circular in different, minus, very, very small areas in the slit. And these circular waves interfere with one another and give us maximums. We have got central maxima, first maxima, and the second maxima, and so on, and so on, and so on. 
Um, in Young's double slit, all the maximus, all the spacing of the fringes or the distance from maximus are actually the same distance throughout. You can only say that this is my um, distance of uh, fringe number one. So, uh, for example, uh, fringe number one is here, and this is my fringe spacing, and then so on. Fringe spacing number two, fringe spacing number two, fringe spacing number three. But in single slit, it works a little bit differently. In single slit, it, you will have a pattern like this. How is it different? Is that central maxima, you will have two fringe spaces, two W instead. And all other maximas, oh, this is a little bit wrong, all other maximas will only occupy one W. So you get central maximas. So central maxima will be two W fringe spacing, and all other maximas will get W instead. If you plot the um, intensity uh, uh, compared to the positions, the central maxima will get 2W and the intensity will be very, 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 very high. And it will follow, the intensity de decrease will follow an exponential curve like that. Okay? And it will decrease and decrease much more. And each one of these, do you see that entire fringe will fit into W and the entire fringe in here will fit in entire W, but in the central maximum in here, it'll be 2W. Okay? So this is how this is different to uh, double slit. Number one, the uh, central fringe will have the fringe spacing of 2W and all other maximums will have the fringe spacing of W. And then the intensity decreases exponentially from the center to the sides. Okay? All right. So um, these are nodes that are... Single slits are not really asked in the exam, but when they come no one can answer these questions. For example, I've given a uh, year 13 this year about a single state question that occurred in the 2019 paper in um, A level, and not one of them can actually answer this. But this is the essence of single state, but it's also in the syllabus, and you need to know this. All right, so uh, do question nine and Pause the video and do question 9 and question 9b and come back to the video after you're done, okay? Okay, welcome back. We talk about double slits, we talk about single slits and now we're going to talk about our third and final um, topic of weight interference is diffraction grating. Diffraction grating, um, for diffraction grating the um, slit, the separation is so small that the maximus are no longer have having the same width. So they are actually a, a fair bit of distance apart from one another, and they're not uniform. In this situation, we can't we can't uh, just see what this distance is. We need to calculate theta instead. You can still use trigonometry to. If you know D, this is right angle, D, if you know angle, you can calculate this very, very easily. But that's trigonometry for you. Um, that's really, really easy. Sine theta equals, or tangent theta equals uh, W over D in here. But uh, I've never seen a question asked for the function grading that asks you to do that instead. But obviously, always, always, always draw a diagram before you do anything like this. In diffusion writing, they are not, uh, this equation, uh, many people have difficulty about when, we, when I first taught you. So um, I'm gonna go through some, some of the questions and hopefully um, you understand this better this time. Um, okay, so D is the separation 
between the slits. I guarantee you, none of the definition of great in question will give you this as it is. It's not happening. They're not giving you, uh, okay, this is separation of slits. Um, what is, the, put, put the equation, uh, put, put the um, numbers in the equation, no. They will never, ever, ever do that for you. Instead, they will give you number of lines per mm. That means that how many slits are there per mm, provided the slits are the same um, width and same distances. Um, but in this situation, usually, they will give you number of lines per mm, but in this one, D is actually measured in meters. So when they give you number of lines per mm, you do need to turn it to num uh, number of lines per meter. And how do you change it? Think about it. If you have 100 lines, uh, if you have one line per mm, do you have more lines in a meter or less? You have more lines in a meter. For example, this doorway, you can see, um, is a, this this board is a meter okay this board is a meter i've got this is one cm how many cms is a meter hundreds so the number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger if you turn mm into meter how big a thousand times bigger okay but this is still not d how do you change this into d if I say number of lines per mm is n, then d is 1 over n. I'll trick one more time, is it? Is this has to be in meter, and this has to be in meter as well. This is the uh, thing most people struggle about. The two other things people don't struggle about, but you still need to understand this. Lambda is obviously wavelength for wave. There's no surprises there. N is number of order, central maximum order will be zero that because the, the um, theta is zero and the sine theta is the angle between the center of the grating to the maximus. If you do it in a diagram, it'll be between this line and first maxima, this line and second maxima. All right, let's try, I'll try question 11 with you and you'll try question 10 yourself. Our uh, expression grating have 500 lines per millimeters. When a monochromatic light is instanced, normally the grating uh, the third order spectral line is formed at 60 degrees from the normal of the grating. What is the wavelength of the monochromatic light? So, firstly, first, uh, first impression, number one, it says 500 lines per millimeter. Don't even start. Think about uh, writing these down or substituting to, to, to this equation first. Firstly, let's sort that out into D, because that's not D, that's N. N is number of lines per M, M not per meter. That's not, uh, that's not N, this is N. So number of lines per meter is N, number of lines per M, M is not N. Remember this, remember this. So, let's start with that first. If it's 500 lines per M, M that means that it's 500 lines times a thousand lines per meter. So this is what you get is 500,000 lines per meter. So that is N. In order for us to find D, one over N equals D. So D will be two times 10 to the six, minus six meters. Put it in the equation, D sine theta equals N lambda. So um, D is that two times oops, two times ten to the minus six sine 
sexy Louise because M N is the order of magnitude it says that it's the third order spectral line so third order spectral line so it's three lambda put it down in the calculations because this is third order okay so lambda will be 5.77 times 10 to the minus 7 that will give us 580 times 10 to the minus power, power minus 9 so the answer is B 500, 580 nanometers okay all right so that is um question 10 i'm gonna do also do question 12 with you or please pause the video try question 12 first and we'll go through it afterwards all right for question 12 they are asking you for an idea called maximum order. Let's look at this diagram. What, what, what am I talking about? So this is first order. This is second order. Uh, I'm sorry. This is central maximum. This is the first maximum, first order. This is second order. Imagine that's the third order, which we can uh, go as well. Fourth. Fifth, but eventually, what is the maximum theta? Maximum theta, theta maximum, is going to be 90 degrees. Why? Because if you have a, a theta that's bigger than 90 degrees, let's say this is theta y, theta y bigger than 90 degrees, it cannot hit the screen. The screen will be behind the grating. If the screen is behind the grating, uh, interference doesn't happen and maximum doesn't happen as well. So maximum maximum theta will be 90. It's less than 5, 90 actually. 90 will not do anything as well. So in this situation, sine 90 degrees will be maximum. And if you can put in the calculator, sine 90 is actually 1. Why? Because the range of sine is minus 1 to 1. But maximum, so maximum here, sine theta is equal to 1. So when they talk about maximum order, that means that sine theta is equal to 1. How do I, so if sine theta is equal to 1, we know d, we know lambda, then we can know how many maximum order is there. So, um, question 12. The grating is then replaced, so this is the normal um, slits per meters, per meter, so they, they don't actually need to, need to change it millimeters, so that's great. Um, the grating is then replaced by a plane transmitter grating, which is two, and slits per meter. So before, in this, I'm gonna rub this out and just use this equation to look at this particular question instead, okay? So we are talking about the maximum number of order. So we know that if there's a maximum number of order, sine theta will equal to one. Um, oh, we are not looking at maximum order, but this is using the idea of maximum number of order. So, uh, but maximum number of order is, is an idea that is going to come, come back later on in the question that you're going to try in question 13. But in this uh, question, um, they are asking you, they are changing D. How are they changing D? They're not changing D directly, they're changing N. We know that. 1 over n equals d. So let's substitute it in the equation first. So we get 1 over n sine theta equals n lambda. Um, I'm going to put it in the equation, much easier. So n, okay? So 
which of the following statements is correct? With the first grating, the first order being... Oh, so they have told you that uh, the second order being... Beam. Yep. Second order, so if n equals 2, theta is theta. Yep, theta is theta. Only if n equals 2. So let's look at what I am talking about. Yeah, uh, theta is theta is n equals 2. So let's look at the four options. With the first grating, the first order beam is at angle of 0 0.5 theta and 0 order transmitted beam. Is that correct? So they are saying that if this, instead of n equals 2, if this decrease by, if it is decreased by 2, then theta is going to uh, increase. Theta is going to decrease by 2. Number 1, if this is decreased by 2, theta, not theta, is going to decrease by 2. But sine theta is going to decrease by 2, 2 times. Sine theta is decreased by 2, and theta is decreased by 2 is completely different things. Okay? That's why, in this question, the only answer, um, the only answer that can be correct is C. Let's look at C. With the second grading, the order beam is at angle theta to zero order a transmitted beam. The second grating. In the second grating, uh, they are using the second grating. They are, they are instead of n, you use 2n. Okay? So if the second grating is using 2n, so this is increased by 2, they are saying that the first order beam is theta. So instead of n equals 2, this is decreased by 2. Increase by 2, decrease by 2, this effect is cancelled out. That means sine theta is not changing, hence theta is not changing. So uh, that's why the first order beam is at angle at theta at zero order transmitted beam because this grating has increased by two number of lines per meters that is and this they are talking about n uh, first order instead of second order so that's why sine theta will be at uh, the same and theta is the same remember if you increase sine theta by two times theta is not increased by two times put in a calculator try 0.25, try getting sine theta equals 0 0.25 and sine theta equals 0 0.5. Okay, let's try it now. Uh, 0 0.2 sine minus 1, 0 0.25. So theta in here is 14.48 and And here is 30. This is not times 2. Okay? It's almost times 2, but not like not 100% times 2. So you can't say that, okay, if I decrease sine theta uh, by 2, I uh, or, or times times this by 2, this times by 2. You can't say that. Okay? Alright. This is the end of um this particular episode of Wave Revision 3. After this, we're going to do a test. We're going to do a wave test. Details to come. And mechanics test. Okay, thank you.